the number one most powerful way to manifest, bar none. Hi, I am your host, Guy Cheyenne, and welcome back once again to Rebuild Reality, where as always, we talk about who we really are, why we're here, and how all of this stuff works. Now, in manifestation and reality creation, there is nothing that is more powerful that will change your life more completely and more utterly profoundly. Not any process, not any technique, not any healing, not any guru. This one thing does it all. And it is the one and only step you will ever need to take. And that is to move how you identify yourself and to finally stop identifying yourself as the seeker of everything you want and changing it to the source of it, to the creator of it, to the one who's giving it to you. Therefore, you're not the one who is begging for it. You're not the one who's trying to be good enough for it. You're not the one who's trying to figure it out. You're not the one who is just trying, you know, forever putting yourself in that lower place. Because that's what it does when you're seeking something. You're putting yourself in that place where you're, you're having to ask somebody else for it. And that's a very uncomfortable place, you know, because that means that in your mind, there is always that chance that you want, you might not get it, right? But if you're the source of it, well, done deal, right? So you knowing that you are the source of everything that you want, you knowing that you can give it to yourself is what removes the doubt from your mind, right? So... And the thing is, is that when you doubt yourself, you are doubting the creator, the God that you are. You're saying, nope, that there, I, I, you know, I may not be fulfilled. I may not get what I want, that there is a chance that it, it won't work out, that I am not, as opposed to I am. And of course, I am is your source of all creation to say, no, I am that. I am source. I am the creator. I am the one who has this. I'm the one that's got that. That is mine. And you go and you claim it because it is yours. Because if you can think of it, it does exist. And if you can think of it and you have a desire of it, it's basically that life, that you, that version of you saying, come on, come on, come on. You know, I'm right here. I'm right here. Just take it. Take on this identity and let everything else go, right? Because really, in both science and spirituality, there is only wholeness. There is only unity. There is only completion. Um, at, at its very core of both of these things, there is that, that unity. There, there is no division. There is no separation. So it's, it's all there. Like I've said before, there is no not there is no non there is no nope you can't have it <laughs> there is only that yes it is only we who can create the no you know so there is only that wholeness and completeness that's that's the truth of it you know so when you say that there may not be well you're denying who you really are and you're putting that wedge between you and what it is that you really want, you know, and you do, you have the free will to deny it. If you want to, you can create that reality, that experience for yourself if you want to, but naturally, normally, if you didn't put anything in between you and the idea that you may not get what you want, there would not be any blocks. So it is only humans who create that false perception that there could possibly be non-fulfillment, that I may not get it, you know? But of course, nothing is impossible, N not at all. Not for something which is you, that is already all that is. You've just forgotten your true identity, you know? That you have to accept that. There is more to you than, than meets the eye, that the 3D you and the 3D brain were never meant to do it alone. That there 
is two parts of you. There's a part A and a part B, right? There is the seen part of you and the not seen part of you. And that's why we have like the idea of co-creation because those two parts of you, the seen and the unseen, just like in reality, you know, there's particles that you can see. There's particles that you can't see that make up all the particles that you can see, right? So it's both sides of the coin, which is one thing, one coin. It seems like it's two different things, but it's not. And it's like the same with you. There is that part of you that you're familiar with that is a very kind of limited part of you. So you could have this experience in the first place, but then there is the rest of you, of course, which is almost unfathomable. And this little less aware part of you, you know, um, you don't have, and you weren't meant to have all of the, the knowing, all of the understanding. It was meant to work in conjunction with the bigger part of you. You know, that's kind of what it's all about. So we have no limited capacity. You know, we think that we do, but we're connected to the part who has full capacity, you know? Um, so we're not here, you know, and we make that because of the illusion of separation. We're like, okay, well, there is this notness. There is this no, there is this not having, not feeling whole, not feeling complete. So not only must there be somebody doing that, but then we have all these feelings of um, suffering because of it, because we feel that we're suffering, because we feel that we're not good enough or we're not getting it, we're not smart enough, we're not good enough and all this stuff. And that's always a really big thing with with most everybody but when you remember that you really are the source and you're just not perceiving all of yourself because as i always say we are seeing scientifically 0.1% of reality like i always say which is nothing what you're seeing everything that you are perceiving is the most minuscule almost zero percentage of you that there is so until you accept that there is that bigger part of you that you are not just this little tiny perception that you perceive yourself as that you really do have that massive power within you that you are naturally connected to well, then you will always be in that place of perceiving yourself as the small me. And things will maybe work sometimes and they won't work other times. It'll be hit and miss and on and off and stuff. So finally accepting that, yes, that is you. Yes, you do have that. It is a reality, both in a spiritual sense and in a scientific sense when we look at it, you know. So all you have to do really is to pick what you want to be. And you can pick that I'm not even making any choices. I am just the creator of it all. And it all naturally flows to me. Or you can pick, you can choose what role you want to play. You choose it, you pick it, you imagine it, you assume it's done. And the absolutely everything from then on is all nothing more than the unfoldment, than that bridge of incidents, you know, that, that Neville Goddard talks about. And no matter if it's opposite, if it's uncomfortable, if it's this or that, that doesn't matter. You move into that identity and you stay there. That's what the whole thing about living in the end. It's not visiting the end. <laughs> it is living there. It's a declaration of who you are. It's, it's making that you, you stay there. It is finally accepting your true identity of yourself as the source of it all, not the seeker, not divided, not less than, not little you, not any of that, you know, moving to that, being bold and brave enough really to finally accept that identity once and for all, that power, which is the real you. So moving from one identity to the other, being brave enough to finally step into the real true you, now that makes life worth living and everything worth having. So I hope that has helped. I am, of course, your host, Sky Cheyenne. Thank you once again for being here with me.
beautiful creators. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you to all the new subscribers out there. Thank you for liking, for sharing, for commenting, and I'm going to see you here next time.